We are at the Fields Institute to interview the Fields Medalist of 1966, Professor Stephen Smail from the City University of Hong Kong. Thank you very much, Professor Smail, for letting us interview you at the Fields Institute. We would like to talk to you about your personal life as well as your mathematical achievements. So please tell us uh, what first got you interested in mathematics? Oh, I knew there were lots of short situations where I would look at some mathematical problem even in grade school. But uh, eventually I went into chemistry in high school, physics in college, and I was failing physics. So I had some math, I could switch to math. So it was kind of a area of last resort. So how early was that? How early did you first realize that mathematics will be your career? Oh, I don't know if I ever did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm still uh, not sure. Uh, you know, now I'm working in uh, medicine and uh, I have other things too, which are, could be a career, minerals. Right. And um, in your undergraduate studies, uh, at some points uh, you were struggling with your grades, but then you improved tremendously in uh, graduate school. So please tell us, how did you improve uh, so tremendously and so quickly? <laughs> uh, well, it wasn't so... In the beginning of graduate school, I was still doing badly enough. And after I, uh, I was warned by the chairman of the department that I couldn't stay in school, that helped me become more serious. And then uh, I had a very inspiring teacher, Raoul Bott, uh, who paid a lot of attention to uh, three, he had three students and many others. So uh, that was a good uh, you know, inspiration. Mm -hmm. And so at some point I began devoting my main uh, efforts into mathematics. That was probably my second year of graduate school, or third, probably second year. Mm -hmm. Third year, I don't know. Okay, so would you say that uh, your earlier struggles with grades are attributed to uh, not being challenged enough in class, or what do you think it was? Oh, you know, it's partly just uh, putting my effort into uh, something. Uh, it's hard to put a lot of effort into too many things at once. Mm -hmm. As if, say, I came from this very country area, and my high school teacher even discouraged me from going to Ann Arbor, oh. uh, even though I was doing pretty good. Uh, so I felt a little bit challenged. I came to the uh, University of Michigan. I took uh, immediately the honors course in mathematics. And I you know, knew about the top of the class of that. And maybe I got overconfident, but I spent a lot of time on that. And I got perhaps overconfident, so then I started taking other math courses after the first year, mm -hmm. then I started get, getting poor grades. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but also I was putting a lot of effort into uh, some other things instead, like chess team, oh. politics. Yeah, I was organized as chess club, mm -hmm. played in a lot of uh, tournaments. So, you know, I would throw my energies into one thing or another, and uh, mm -hmm. it just turned out oftentimes not to be mathematics. So, you know, I don't think I was ever uh, bad in math, it's just that I didn't uh, turn a lot of attention to it. But what I did, uh, like the last couple of years of graduate school, I think that I did good. Right. Thank you very much. So, uh, I would like to talk to you about your early career achievements. Uh -huh. And uh, please tell us when you made your award-winning discovery. Did you immediately tell your colleagues and your family, or did you wait? Oh, you mean the Poincaré conjecture, the, yes. one, the one that was most famous? Yes. Oh, I tell everybody everything all the time. Usually it's wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so some, oftentimes they don't take it too seriously, or even myself. Oh. But uh, you know, only time will tell whether it's right, and it's usually not. I have some exciting new discovery I made. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It turns out that you know, for their analysis, it's not right. So, you know, I talk about these things, no secrets. I tell the family every day. Mm -hmm. I come home, I used to tell my wife every, not every day, but every week or two that I made this really uh, good discovery, and usually it's not, not so good. Mm -hmm. 
So what was the reaction of your colleagues and your family when they uh, found out? Well, as I say, uh, you know, they're skeptical. <laughs> oh. They should be because I make so many mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, as it you know, gradually it became more and more solid. And, uh, and so it was a gradual process. It's not a sudden. Right. I mean, there is, was a sudden point where I think I had it, but there were other sudden points. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they grow and grow and grow. So, uh, what was the reaction when they finally found out that you are getting the Fields Medal? Oh, no, no special reaction. Uh, oh! <laughs> the Fields Medal itself, uh, yeah, no, the Fields Medal itself, rather than the discovery of the mathematics, was a little different. Mm -hmm. The Fields Medal itself, uh, of course, that is a, a definite time and place. Uh, I don't remember the reaction. Okay. It's probably, uh, you know... And could, you, could you please uh, briefly describe the result of uh, your work? So This is, you're talking now about the work that... Uh, just the Poincaré conjecture, yeah. Poincaré conjecture. Just in some accessible terms that our undergraduate listeners may understand. Yeah, it uh, has to do with... Uh, yeah, understanding, jumping first of all from three dimensions, which I tried and mm -hmm. hadn't been successful to much higher dimensions. And, uh, and the idea was to, when you have a much higher dimensional manifold, say bigger than four, mm -hmm. then some techniques work. But I was doing a different problem. Was, but it was related. I was simplifying uh, the structures of the all manifolds. And so, you know, the ways of making those simpler and simpler. And it turned out eventually they, they did work, but not in the three mm -hmm. and four dimensional case. And so you got these simpler and simpler constructions of building uh, manifolds. Uh, and when some of the algebraic invariants were uh, trivial, mm -hmm. you could, for example, take a, a string in the space and pull it to a point, mm -hmm. then you could make these constructions. Uh, get really simpler, and finally you would get something that looked like a sphere. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. So, uh, are you saying that it's easier to uh, work with manifolds in uh, dimensions that are greater than three? So Greater than four, yeah. Oh, sorry, greater than yeah, four. Yeah, uh, I won't say it's easier or not easier, but uh, mm -hmm. the, it was different methods for, that finally uh, handled dimension three. Mm -hmm. Dimension four was some combination. Uh, so before it was done, who knows what's easier? Right. I mean, if somebody started out with some of these differential equations in the three sphere, people might today say three sphere was easier. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. And uh, where were you when you realized that you finally solved the problem? Where was I? Yeah. What were you doing? Oh, as I say, it was when I discovered the problem was solved. That was not a single time because I had many mm -hmm. false alarms okay. and. Yeah. And even when I thought, finally, mm -hmm. I, when I was right, I didn't know that I was right. Oh, even yeah. Well, how okay. do you know? <laughs> okay, yeah. So that was in Brazil, in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro. Mm -hmm. uh, I was visiting there for six months as a postdoc. Right. So during that six months, you came to the solution, right? Yeah, yeah. And I said, you know, later on, I said, right, my best known work was done on the beaches mm -hmm. of Rio, and now that was a mistake. Oh, okay. Because uh, my best known, I did two things on the beaches in Rio. One was the solution of this Moncari's conjecture, and the other was the discovery of the horseshoe. Mm -hmm. I think maybe my horseshoe work is the best known work. Right. So uh, <laughs> they were both done in the same semester. In, in That's, Rio. It's very interesting. We hear that a lot of mathematical discoveries are happening in Rio de Janeiro. Is there something to impa, like some intellectual vibe that uh, promotes thinking? I don't know. You know, it certainly was not a great mathematical center back then in 1960. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had a couple of friends I could talk to, one about topology and one about mm -hmm. dynamics. So that was good for me, and they had a very good library. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's sometimes it's good to have people to talk to, and sometimes it's not necessary to have so many people to talk to. Right. And uh, uh, please tell us, how did your professional life change after you were awarded the Fields Medal? 
Oh, and it didn't change much. Mm -hmm. Because some of these things, uh, uh, you know, it's the timing. The feels metal was a delayed reaction to what the, my fame. Mm -hmm. So after I did the phone correct conjecture and people believed it, that's what changed my life, professional life. Not the feels metal. By the time the feels metal came, that was you know, a few years later. So what were the main changes? Oh, yeah. So the main changes, uh, this was already back in 1960, 61, just after I had uh, done this. Mm -hmm. And I think people became convinced uh, pretty soon, a few matter of months, that it was true. Uh, and then, uh, oh, I, you know, I, you know, I came out very famous and got a few very big offers. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, my position at Berkeley was changed from assistant professor to associate professor before I even got there. Mm -hmm. That was the summer of 60. And then during that year, uh, places like University of Chicago, uh, Columbia, you know, maybe offers double, double my salary, full professorships, mm -hmm. a very high salary. So I left Berkeley. <laughs> okay. And then Princeton also made me an offer, which I declined. So I was getting, you know, offers that, a professorship at the age of 30, and, oh. and it was very high pay. And so, did it take courage to uh, just decline the offer from Princeton University? Because Princeton is considered the uh, universe, pretty much, the uh, center of universe of mathematics. Yeah, yeah no, I saw, yeah, it was easy enough. I had a job at Columbia okay. at that time, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I had friends there, and people had made some effort to bring me to Columbia, and they had recognized just a few months earlier, mm -hmm. they had uh, offered a double my salary yeah. at Berkeley uh, before Princeton. So I had already moved to Columbia. I wasn't ready to just okay. jump over to Princeton. All right. So um, many, or well, maybe not many, but some mathematicians, after receiving the Fields Medal, abandoned their careers. Is there a stigma that is attached to a Fields Medal? Well, I don't think so, but, uh, you know, when you're uh, in some position of a, an accomplishment or otherwise, uh, mm -hmm. you get a lot of attention and you get a lot of a, you know, support and a lot of attacks. I mean, the most popular person in the U.S. is oftentimes the same person as the most unpopular in the U.S., namely the president. Mm -hmm. They are at the same time the most unpopular person Hated, the most hated person is the president, usually. Right. And the most loved person is the president, usually. Yes. So, you know, with the Fields Medal and uh, having done this work, uh, you know, a little bit of that phenomenon. Right. Yeah, so there is a little bit of, you know, people uh, find reasons to get upset with me or whatever. Mm -hmm. And what can young researchers do to overcome this uh, tremendous pressure that the Fields Medal is putting on them? I mean, people who get the yeah, Fields the people medal. who get the Fields Medal, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so uh, I don't know what, you know, everybody has to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, and so for a lot of people who do any big research, get Nobel Prize or Fields Medal, there's a tendency for them, for that person, to consolidate their achievements. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's most, most Fields Medals do that. And they work in the same field, yeah. or, or, or expanded a little bit. And I find my own path has been uh, to leave the field. Mm -hmm. So I, I left topology. And then, you know, I found it more exciting to, to change. And I don't say other people should do that, but that's was my own. Uh, but I found the most satisfying. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the general opinion is that uh, Fields Medal is uh, designed to promote further research. Do you think uh, it's uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing? Is it really promoting? Well, I don't know if it's supposed to do that. Yeah, I think it's supposed to inspire scientists. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. Uh, the reward is to inspire other scientists, not to promote that scientist's own work so much. It's to give an inspiration for other people to want to win the Fields Medal and to work, you know, hard and so on. So that's why I'd say the main mm -hmm. goal would be, uh, it's not, it's mainly to inspire other, other right. people, other mathematicians. Right. And you uh, 
like your works uh, won different awards other than Fields Medal. But other than the research that was award-winning, which of your academic works are the most dear to you, including the most recent ones? Oh, that, that's hard to say. Uh, you know, certainly, besides the work in topology, the work in dynamics, chaos, you know, I'm very happy to have them. Uh, it's work in computation, complexity theory, the foundations mm -hmm. of uh, real complexity theory. You know, this is not, these things are often done with other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, you know, the learning theory in the last 10, 15 years, what we call learning theory in a broad sense, and its applications to vision and what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. peptide binding. Right. Those are some of them. Yeah, so if you were a postgraduate student right now, or a student just entering grad school, uh, what would you choose to do a thesis on? I don't know. In retrospect, I don't know. Uh, you know, I think there is a field that's going pretty fast, and that is the uh, relations of mathematics. You know, the field, how this field has inspired math, and how the mathematics helps this area. And that is, uh, in contrast, uh, to the physical sciences, which has played a role like that for mm -hmm. hundreds and thousands of years. Now it's much more the biological sciences and the sciences of intelligence, artificial and human, mm -hmm. that are inspiring uh, most of the new mathematics, and where mathematics is playing a bigger and bigger role. So I would say that would be the area that I would... Uh, you know, I think it would be the, a good thing for a graduate student. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you are a role model for so many mathematicians and so many students. Are there any mathematicians that you look up to? Well, you know, I think I don't have heroes, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe heroes for a day. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, certainly I've been influenced by, you know, some of the work of Poincaré. Mm -hmm. In my own uh, thesis advisor, Raoul Bott, it uh, was important for me to get started. Mm -hmm. And Rene Tom sometimes, but I did make, have a big conflict with him also. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a question for me of having a single, mm -hmm. you know. So the conflict that you mentioned, was it of a professional nature or of personal mm -hmm. nature? Professional. Okay. Catastrophe theory. I was mm -hmm. the big public... Uh, you know, attack of catastrophe. Right. So, in what ways are your passion for mathematics is a part of your personality? Oh, you know, I don't know. You know, I do get uh, obsessed mm -hmm. into things I get involved in. I can put a, a lot of my total amount of my energy for a while. Then it's not necessarily mathematics, but at mm -hmm. times it is mathematics, but you know I get obsessed with uh, collecting minerals, mm -hmm. so I spend so much of my time and effort in collecting minerals. When I was interested in becoming a photographer, mm -hmm. I would spend almost all my time uh, dealing with uh, becoming, learning photography or sailing a boat. I would become obsessed with that. Mm -hmm. So there is this kind of a obsessions I get about what I'm doing sometimes right. that helps uh, make progress. So. Yeah, and where do you get those new ideas? Because it seems even your hobbies are so different from each other, so collecting minerals is much different than sailing. Uh, who do you get those ideas from, <laughs> or how do you come up with them? Oh, uh, you know, Being obsessed and uh, taking advantage of uh, all the different sources of mm -hmm. uh, information and practice and doing things, uh, just, you know, just combining them and, you know, I try to be independent too and I, I never use teachers to uh, learn things. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody, you know, like skiing, I never had that skiing teacher, but oh. I learned to ski by myself. So you just self-learned? Wow. Yeah, and the same for uh, photography and mm -hmm. mineral collecting and uh, to some extent maybe even mathematics, I didn't too much attention to my teachers. So uh, there is a kind of independence that's helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not and not following teachers. 
I see this be an important principle. Mm -hmm. So do you think this uh, uh, part of your personality where you're an independent thinker, uh, do you think uh, it, that was one of the reasons uh, that contributed to your uh, changing your orientations in research several times? Probably, yeah, sure, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, also, you know, the idea of avoiding in a new field to try to start from the bottom up, which would take forever and uh, probably not get new ideas. I would just uh, look at the problems as much as I could understand them, which seemed mm -hmm. to be interesting to me, and uh, and develop uh, what I needed uh, to, you know, to choose what problems to do and how to do them and so on, and uh, start doing. You know, yeah. I, I, I believe a lot. Of learning comes uh, from doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's very important. Thank you very much, Professor Smale, for this uh, wonderful conversation today. And we hope to see you in Toronto again soon. Thank you.